This is a story that will help children understand panic attacks and how to manage them. But although the story is made for children, it can also help parents understand how panic attacks work and how to deal with them. So watch it together with your children. There will be a link at the end to other videos about panic attacks that go into greater detail for adults. Brad and Amy lived in the same street. They were in the same class in school and they were great friends. Amy loved Brad and would always try to protect him. Brad was a bit of a worrier and there had been so much to worry about lately. Everyone was talking about the coronavirus and everyone was wearing masks. He had a test in school that he was worried about. To make it worse, today he had to learn about the human body in school. He hated learning about all those gooey bits inside us. In school, the teacher started teaching the class about how the lungs work and how we need them to breathe. What if your lungs didn't work, whispered Amy. This made Brad very nervous and he started concentrating on his breathing to make sure his lungs were working properly. My breathing feels funny, said Brad, and I feel a bit dizzy. Amy had to think about it. Maybe there is something wrong with your lungs, said Amy. This made it worse. Brad became very scared and could feel his heart beating very fast. After class, Brad and Amy talked about what had happened. Amy was very worried about Brad and tried to give him advice. It might happen again, said Amy. Maybe it was because you were hot. Perhaps you should sit by the door in the future as it will be cooler and you can leave easily. Maybe you should try and feel your heartbeat to make sure it's still working. Brad tried some of Amy's suggestions, but a few days later he was in his mum's car and had the feelings of panic all over again. Afterwards he went to see Amy for advice again. Amy was now even more worried about Brad, so she tried really hard to give him some advice to prevent these awful panics from happening. Maybe the car was too hot. Ask your mum to put the air conditioning on in future, suggested Amy. Maybe you should just walk to school. Maybe you should not go to school at all. Maybe you should breathe faster. Or, or maybe you should breathe slower. Amy had lots of suggestions. From that day on, Amy was always giving Brad advice whenever he had one of his panics. She would help him fight these awful panic attacks. But despite all Amy's help, the panics were getting worse and lasting longer. And Brad was now having to avoid all the things he used to enjoy doing. So Brad decided to go and see Mr Grey. Mr Grey was the cleverest teacher in the school. He would know what to do. Brad explained the problem of the panics and Mr Grey listened carefully. I think I know what the problem is, said Mr Grey. It's Amy that is making you panic. The advice she has given you is actually making the panics worse, not better. Amy means well, of course, explained Mr Grey, so don't get cross with her. But you should challenge her when she suggests these things to you. And when you feel the panic coming, don't try to fight it or run away from it like Amy suggests. Instead, just drop your arms to your sides with your hands nice and loose. Let your shoulders slump and let the panic pass. But Amy will tell me to try and fight it or to stop it, said Brad. Give Amy a big smile, said Mr Grey, even if you do feel scared. She will see your smile and see you looking more relaxed and she will stop giving you all these suggestions that are making your panic worse. This all seemed very odd to Brad, but Mr Grey was a very clever teacher, so he decided to give it a try. A few days later, Brad had another panic. He brought his hands to his face, tensed all his muscles and tried to control his breathing. As usual, Amy was there offering the same old advice. Then Brad remembered what Mr Grey had said. Brad dropped his hands to his side slumped his shoulders, and as hard as it was, he managed to force a little smile. Amy was surprised, but relieved to see Brad looking more relaxed, so stopped giving him advice. The panic soon passed, so Brad was relieved also. A few days later, Brad was about to put his coat on to go home from school. Don't put your coat on, said Amy. You know being warm can cause panics. Brad remembered how Mr Grey had told him to challenge Amy's advice. But I have worn my coat thousands of times without having a panic, said Brad, who then put his coat on to show Amy there was nothing to fear. The next day, Brad's mum was taking him to school in the car. Don't get in the car, said Amy. You know you have panic attacks in the car. Brad felt a bit nervous, but remembering what Mr Grey had said, gave Amy a big smile and got in the car anyway. 
He waved goodbye to Amy, still with a big smile on his face. Brad got to school with no panic attacks. Over the next few weeks and months, Amy kept trying to protect Brad from panics the only way she knew how. Sometimes Brad would listen to her and would have a really bad panic. But then he would go to see Mr Gray, who would remind him of what he should do and how it was important not to follow Amy's advice. Brad found that as he did what Mr Gray said and stopped listening to Amy, the panics did not last so long and got less and less frequent. Eventually the panic stopped altogether and Amy stopped giving him advice. Both Brad and Amy felt a lot happier and more relaxed now that the panics had gone. If you have been getting panic attacks, you can learn a lot about what to do from the story of Brad and Amy. You see, in our brains we have a part which is just like Amy. It's there to protect us from when there is real danger, like a lion or something. But sometimes it gets confused and gives us bad advice that makes us feel scared when there's no danger. But if we show this Amy part of the brain that everything is okay, it stops making us feel scared and panicky. So if you feel a panic coming, do what Mr Grey Matter said. Drop your open hands to the side, slump your shoulders and give a big smile. Because you will look relaxed, even though you might not feel it, the Amy part of your brain will realise nothing is wrong and the panic will pass quickly. And don't forget to challenge your own Amy when she tells you to avoid things because of your panics. If you do the opposite of what Amy tells you, she will soon learn there is nothing to be scared of and stop making you panic. That's the end of the story for children, but grown-ups can find out a lot more about panic attacks by subscribing to my channel. Please also share my video so that other families who are worried about panic attacks can learn that they are not something to fear. The key to beating anxiety is knowledge. Let's share that knowledge.